Good fam, happy Wednesday, everybody. I hope you're having a great week, but per usual, it is about to get so much better. I know y'all are excited for this episode. I've already seen y'all commenting on Instagram. Y'all requested this couple so many times, so I'm thrilled to announce that we finally have Matt and Abby on the podcast. Welcome to the Well That's Good podcast. Yay, Yay! Thanks for having us. This is so exciting. Yeah, honored to be here. Hey, it is so exciting for me. Truly, um, we've had so many people request that y'all come on, and then we did this little like, "Oh, look who's coming up!" and everyone's like, "Matt and Abby." So uh, I'm Aww. so thrilled. Everyone's gonna be pumped to get to hear from y'all, and I'm excited to just get to know you guys because we've never met. Yeah, this will be really fun. Yeah, super excited. So fun. Okay, so before we jump in and get to know each other, I got to ask you the question that everyone gets asked on their first time on this podcast, and that is kind of an intimidating question. It's kind of big to just drop on at the very beginning, but what is the best piece of advice that you two have ever been given? Do you want me to take it off? I feel like we probably have different ones. Yeah, I think we do. I think think, um, for me, it's to enjoy the process and fall in love with the process for anything. Because I I think, yeah, I, a lot of like, I feel like we're both goal oriented people and it's like, you almost like delay your happiness till you achieve that goal. But through like falling in love with the process, like every day can become just like, fulfilling and happy and not just focused on that one yes. like I don't know not that goals aren't important but falling in love with the process has made achieving my goals way more enjoyable and possible yes I feel, I love I feel that. lame oh oh yeah I it's funny mine's like literally the same as Abby's because really? somebody yeah well somebody <laughs> on our awesome. wedding day told me they're like just fully live in this moment and enjoy it and on my wedding day, I did that, but my whole life I've lived looking forward to the future because I'm so, I'm always excited for the next thing. I'm always, always excited for like, you know, marriage and then kids and buying a house and like always looking forward to things in the future. Um, and then I've, I've ignored like being present in the moment. So uh, that's something that I'm, I'm still trying to work on today, but uh, yeah, I, I think that kind of goes right along with enjoying the process. Come on. I love that. Y'all didn't even plan that. And it was like so perfect. But that's such good advice, honestly, because so many people do live like that. It's like they withhold, like you said, their happiness until their goal is achieved. But the process is life. Like the process mm-hmm. is is a huge part of your life. You're going to spend way more time in the process than the achievement of it. And so you might as well make those days count and make those days something that, um, you know, you, you make the memories from. Because I can think about the process of getting to places I've gone and is normally actually in the process that you have some of the best memories. We were actually just talking the other day about how many funny stories we have in the airport, which is kind of like a good point to say the trips are memorable, the trips are fun. But on the way there, you have such fun memories as well. And that's part of it. Um, I was actually just watching a video of you guys um, truly in the process on a trip whenever I think one of your sons had like an explosion and poop was everywhere. <laughs> and that is the story of our traveling life. Like people always ask me my travel advice for moms. I'm like, just, just make it, you know, just, just, just laugh at yourself and get there because <laughs> oh that has gosh. happened so many times where Haven has had a blowout and it's the one time you don't pack the extra outfit. And then they're just like in their diaper. You're like, yep, this is where we're at. I know. Matt was like, we just kind of take him off the plane like this. I'm like, it is zero degrees outside. I didn't realize walking off the plane, this specific airport, we weren't going to be indoors. It was outside in Montana, freezing cold. I was like, we so, have to make this work. Thank goodness yeah. Abby spent 15 minutes scrubbing the poop out of the onesie That's in so the restroom uh, in this tiny little airport, you know, airplane bathroom. So oh you're yeah. totally right God. though. Like that made it it made it fun, honestly. Like it's funny. it was just funny. And, and, good and we were already having a horrible travel day that day. <laughs> yeah. And that was like the one flight. We, I, I changed three poopy diapers on that flight. And then one <laughs> yeah. of them was, it was the blowout. It was two hours so long. I don't understand. It was a two hour flight. Like, yeah. what, what the heck? <laughs> that always happens. Like our very first flight with Honey, you know, you're gearing up. You're trying to do everything right. We have all the things. I saw y'all had Miss Rachel. We had all of our, you know, we watched Listener Kids and we had it like pre recorded so that we didn't need Wi Fi just in case. I mean, we were like ready. And then it was, on like as soon as we took off she poops and I'm like oh no this is not good and I'm only like 
two, three months postpartum. This is our first child. So I'm already kind of like unsure. I've never changed a baby on a plane before. So I go back there, change her. Then I go back to sit back down and we're on a flight to California. So from Dallas to California, it's like a couple of hours and it's already not going well. So then she starts crying and she's not just like crying. Honey has this tongue roll cry where like literally she rolls her tongue so loudly. Like our pediatricians, like we know when honey gets here because it's such a loud cry. So she's doing this on the plane. I'm like, oh no, no. So then I'm like, I'm just going to go sit in the bathroom with her and just sing to her and try to just, you know, distract her. So I'm sitting in the bathroom, I'm literally singing. I'm like singing like Jesus, I'm singing like all these songs. And I'm thinking no one can hear me. And I'm there for like 30 minutes singing, talking to her, all this stuff. And then Christian comes and knocks on the door and he takes over. And I realized they could hear me the entire time. I'm thinking I'm like removing the distraction, being in the bathroom privately. Little did I know the whole plane heard Jesus loves me and the tongue girl. So that was like our first start to traveling. And uh, you know what? It's very humbling. But those are the things that we're still laughing about and talking about. So that's really good advice. You just got to laugh at yourself along the way as you go. I totally so, agree. Uh, we can so relate because our pediatrician as well is like, holy cow, your son has the like, lungs on this guy. Yeah, yeah, has some powerful <laughs> lungs. Yep. It's our second. He is. Yeah. He's built different. I he's, don't know. He's and he's gotten way different. easier as he's gotten older. But like when he in the in the thick of the newborn stage, like I I thought at one point I might hearing get hearing loss, loss oh because of how gosh. like yeah it and I don't know it's just yeah every kid's different. Every kid is so different. Honey was like that, like strong and loud and independent, and in Haven is just like so gentle and sweet and like honey is really sweet too but it's just a little bit different and so it's just funny every kid's so different you just get to see their originality form at such an early age and it's so beautiful and so cool uh, but anyways people obviously love y'all I've mentioned that it's so fun to follow you guys journey but I want to hear just how y'all met because I I think I saw y'all started dating or met in the eighth grade so y'all been together for a really long time so take us back to how y'all's relationship started yeah, we met in the eighth grade doing theater together. <laughs> we are theater kids, That's proud awesome. about it too. And um, I'm sure that comes as no shocker for people that have seen some of our stuff, some of Matt's moves that can only come out of theater. <laughs> <laughs> and, That's um, awesome. Uh, we both, it's such an interesting experience because we both had never dated anybody until we dated each other. Like oh, that's we had sweet. been on dates, we'd never been like exclusive with anybody. Mm -hmm. And so that didn't come till later because I don't know, I was just not, I had such a crush on him, but I was like, uh, I'll wait for him to come to me. And so then, <laughs> that's awesome. Um, our junior year of high school. Yeah. The summer after junior year. We were in another show together. Yeah. And, and we, we, I ended up asking Abby on a date and we dated long distance um, throughout our senior year of high school. I lived in Missouri. Abby lived in Illinois. And then we decided to go to college together and pursue careers in acting. We were trying to hopefully make it on like Broadway or something like that. Wow. Um, but yeah, and then we ended up changing our degrees completely and deciding we wanted to focus on us rather than pursuing like the arts just because we were worried about how it might affect our relationship with being apart. If like one of us was on a, a tour for a show and we wouldn't see each other for a couple months, we just didn't want to live that life. So Matt um, went into finance. I went into education. Wow. And then... Yeah. Yeah. We've been together for seven and a half years. Wow. That is so cool. I love that though, because, you know, you look back at your life and even if you think you're like, oh, well, that felt kind of random or that felt kind of random. Somehow God works out for good and you look back and you're like, every single thing was intentional and got you to where you are today. Cause like you did this theater thing, you thought you were going to do it on Broadway, but now you're using all those talents on your YouTube. Y'all are writing songs, putting songs out. Even y'all's videos are just so funny and fun and exciting. Like it's just really cool to see what, how he used that. And it didn't look like Broadway, but it looked like what y'all are doing now. And y'all are probably influencing so many more people in this way than even you would if you went to Broadway. So that's so cool. It is so cool because I truly never thought that we would ever do anything like this. I feel like most people that end up in this career, it's not something that they necessarily thought they were going to do growing up because it didn't even exist. But yeah. um, mm -hmm. it's been such a blessing on our marriage, on our family. And that's why we're so 
yeah. the most and, grateful for. And this. in college, we really wanted to get married while we were in college, which was very different. We had like none of our friends were even dating and we're yeah. here, like, we want to get married and we're 19. <laughs> yeah. And so we were working at a pizza restaurant together. We shared a car. We found our pizza restaurant that was willing to hire both of us. So we were like, we could... believe in us. We're not going to break up and so, like make and, this a mess for you. And we That's tried to so get cute. shifts at the, yeah, we were like, please like give us shifts at the same time so we can drive together to work. <laughs> and it was at that pizza restaurant that we were like, if we could work together one day or like own a business it together, so- it'd be the coolest thing ever. So wow. we feel so blessed. It's that circle. is so cool. Y'all are like the ultimate package deal. It's like if you take <laughs> if you take me, you take her. I love That's it. what we did when we were auditioning for colleges too, because we were pursuing theater. You have to we like, like audition. We for like program. told schools like how how funny is that? Like we're eighteen, telling colleges like if you want to accept me in your acting program, you're gonna have to take my girlfriend. Like That's like we're literally so awesome. like saying that to people. That's <laughs> true package. That's amazing. I, I saw y'all talking about this in one of your videos, and I thought it was so good. You're talking about how like dating has kind of become a lost art and how dating is so fun and it's so beautiful. So talk a little bit about y'all's dating years and what you think this generation's missing out on by not being intentional about dating. I remember graduating high school and being so overwhelmed to think about my future, what was going to be next for me, what was going to be there in the long run, and just so many decisions that you have to make. So whether you recently graduated from high school or maybe you're, you know, a little ways off and you're just looking for a career shift or you're looking to learn more about a certain subject, Liberty University has got you covered. With over 700 residential and online degrees to choose from, you'll definitely find what you are looking for that will inspire you. Liberty offers tons of scholarships and discounts to help you achieve your dream at a price that won't break the bank. And online classes are awesome because they're so flexible and can easily fit into a work or study schedule. I have loved taking online classes from Liberty and I know you will too. It was actually so fun um, to take some classes for myself back in 2020 whenever I had a little bit more time on my hands and I just got to learn more about what I love, the Bible. It was awesome. I learned about the Old Testament, the New Testament. I took the Old Testament survey and New Testament and Honestly, those are the only classes I really did because I only did one semester before life got crazy again. But it's so cool because I just preached the message at Passion and I got to overview the whole Bible. And I got to learn a lot of that from Liberty, which is pretty pretty neat. So if online classes aren't your thing or you're looking for something totally new, then you can check out Liberty in person and see if it's right for you. It is a gorgeous campus. And if you are a transfer student or high school, second semester, sophomore, junior, or senior, you and your family can attend college for a weekend at Liberty's amazing campus in Lynchburg, Virginia. When you get there, you're going to be able to experience life as a Liberty student by attending classes, eating in the new dining hall, and meeting other students at Connect events. So the next dates for these are February 22nd to 24th or April 4th to the 6th, which is coming up pretty soon. So make sure you mark those on your calendar, make plans to get there, go with a friend, go with your parent. It's a great way to get to know the school. So friend, uh, you can check out Campus Life at Liberty University, or you can start your future now by going to liberty.com edu slash Sadie. And because you're a Well That's Good listener, you'll actually get your application fee waived. So hey, yo, that's pretty neat. So either way, don't wait because now is the time to get started on your future goals. Go to liberty.edu slash Sadie now and get started today. Well, something I really am thankful for that Matt did is he Like, I was never wondering, like, are we dating or like, what's the situation? Like, right away, he was like, I want to ask you on a date and like called it. He wasn't like, let's just hang out or like, not that there's anything like that's always a bad thing. But like, I knew his intentions from the beginning were like, he wanted to be in a relationship with me. And so when it was like, okay, we're dating. And then it wasn't like this long period of like us going on dates before he was like, will you be my girlfriend? Like, that was like five days after our first date. I love and that. so I like that I wasn't just like left in this like weird questioning state, which is what I hear from so many other girls. Now they're like, well, we're kind of dating. I think like we haven't really talked about it, but like, like, I don't, I don't, I didn't, I wouldn't like that. So I really appreciate that you were like very intentional from the beginning. And, um, thanks. Yeah. And it was just <laughs> fun. Like we always did fun things out together. It wasn't like we were just like, can we just Snapchat each other? Or <laughs> yep. Like, um, I don't know. Not that everything has to be formal, but like we went to Chick-fil-A. We went on a hike. We went to a movie. Like we went to a haunted house. Like and it was fun. Dating's all about the thought behind it. Like it's, it's more so the meaning. It's less about like what you're doing, but like the reason you're doing it. 
And so something we we just started this yesterday. So we're actually repeating our first date. So yesterday we went to Chick-fil-A for dinner and we got like all dressed up and went to Chick-fil-A and then read <laughs> so uh, cards we'd r- written to each other in the past. And then tonight we're going to a movie because we also went and saw a movie on our first date. And then after that, we went hiking. So the next day, tomorrow will be a hike. We Since we have kids, we can't do our yeah. massive... We can't do it yeah. We're, that. Splitting, we're yes. splitting our first date into three days. I but, love um, that. All that to yeah. say is that I feel like that is romantic. Like it's intentional. Yes. It's um, like we're going out and making memories together. Whereas like I feel like dating now, it's like, it's just a matter of like convenience. Yeah. And I think you should let the person know that it is a date and let them know, like plan something out. Like For instance, sometimes I've thought that I'm being nice to Abby if I'm like letting her pick the restaurant, letting her like wanting her to choose everything. But she actually wants me to. She wants me to come up with the whole plan because that to her, that means that I really thought about her and I had her in mind and I took the time to plan something. So So we take turns planning dates. It's not like it always has to be Matt. Yeah. Yeah. But I love that. Well, I love that so much. It's all about intention and pursuit. And the truth is just like everyone wants to be pursued. Everyone wants to be pursued. Everyone wants to feel like someone thought about them and we're intentional about loving them well. And so, you know, people are like, oh, do you think that the guy has to pursue the girl? I'm like, it's not like it has to, but he should want to. Like, wouldn't you want him to desire to pursue you? And then for the girl back to him, wouldn't you want to show him and give him confidence to pursue while pursuing him and being kind back to him and having these fun things. So it's not like, oh, you have to, or you're trying to be traditional. It's like, wouldn't you want to? Cause that's so beautiful and it's so fun. And again, like you said, dating today can be so confusing. People are like, I'm not really sure because he texted me three days ago, but I haven't heard from him. And man, it's such a gift to give someone just like your commitment and such a gift to give someone clarity in that. And I just remember Christian was so good about that because one day we were on the phone And we had just gotten the habit of talking on the phone all the time, like phone calls. He would call me every night and or he would like tell me when he was going to call me next day. Hey, I'm going to call you Thursday night at this time. It was kind of like dates because we were long distance as well. I was living in Nashville and he was in Auburn, um, Alabama at school. And so we kind of just got in this habit and we'd talk. And then it was before we had really established like we were dating. We really just met. We hadn't even been on a date yet. We just so enjoyed talking to each other. And I said, all right, I'll talk to you tomorrow. And I was like, or not. I mean, you don't have to. I got like awkward about it because I was like, well, you don't have to talk to me tomorrow. He was like, of course, I'm going to talk to you tomorrow. I'll text you in the morning. And it was like really sweet because it kind of was like an of course. Like I said it so naturally because of course he would. That's that's what he had shown me. But in the past, my dating had looked like, I'm not sure. Do they like me? Do they not? It's like a little bit confusing. And so I love that he was just like so clear with his intentions. And actually, it's, it's funny that you said that about planning the date because he asked me to come on a date and he was coming to Nashville and that's where I live. So you might would think like, I should plan the date because that's where I live. But I was like, hey, I think you should plan it. It would like mean a lot. I want to see just like you know, what you come up with and what what you think is fun. And he planned this like really fun date, but where we went to lunch was a place called Tupelo Honey. And it's just really cool that our daughter's name is Honey now. And I had never been to Tupelo Honey and that's something I didn't even know was in Nashville. And so it just is really sweet. You know, you never know those little nuggets that seem insignificant at the moment that you look back on and become such core memories. Um, But I love how y'all were so intentional about that. And I love how y'all got married young because we got married young too. And not everyone, you know, does that. I might think that's a little bit crazy, but um, whenever you were getting married, were any of your friends married too? or were y'all like the first one to take that leap and was that kind of crazy yeah we were the first we were definitely the first <clears throat> and we uh I mean I remember feeling f- like it, it was intimidating because I didn't like know anybody that had done what we were doing yeah um but we were we were very serious about it and so like 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 I said with the with the pizza restaurant we were trying to find ways that we could make money so that we could support ourselves financially. We were doing I, the Dave like, Ramsey. Yeah, well, I was yes. reading books for Dave Ramsey like here I am like growing up in it's dance class and, and like That's awesome. trying to be trying to get into acting yet now I'm like doing a reverse 180 and trying to like learn everything I possibly can about finance so that I can know how I can support us financially. Mm-hmm. So it was it was an exciting time and it really forced us to mature quickly and grow up fast. Um and sure, we missed out on a quote unquote college experience that some of our friends got to have because they weren't married as young as we were in college. But 
I would also argue that we got to experience um, a unique college experience that nobody else got to because we got married while we were in college. So yeah. in life, you just you have different paths that uh, come upon you as you go. And, and maybe your experience might look different from somebody else's. But um, I think what works for one person uh, doesn't always work for the next person. So you got to just stick to what works for you. And I will say, like, at the time of us getting married, we didn't really know a lot of other married people, at least our age. We had mentors and stuff. Um, But soon after we got married, we found, like, a whole new community of people that were also young and married that um, was really fun and we're still friends with today. So um, I didn't think there was anyone else. I was like, man, we are so alone in this. And then I'm always shocked time and time again, like, there's so many other people in your exact same boat. And Mm -hmm. it was really cool, like meeting them, becoming friends and getting to share in very similar life experiences. That's so cool. It's so true. Like sometimes you are scared to take a step because you're like, no one's doing that. But then once you take the step, you realize, oh, wait, a lot of people are doing this. I just wasn't doing it before. So I didn't know. And I've felt that way before. Like when I moved to Nashville, I felt like, oh, man, like I'm taking this leap. And then it was so cool because I got there and I'm like, oh, all of you guys are taking this huge leap and have something you're passionate about that you're starting and you're a little bit nervous and it was just so cool to meet people along the way. And same thing, like those girls that I met during that season that we all had moved around the same time and met, they're still like my best friends to this day. And we don't live in the same place, but we relate on so many levels to each other still. And so just any, they're the friends that like, you cannot see them for a while, but as soon as you see them, you pick up right where you left off because you got to experience something so special together. So that's so cool. Um, I love how y'all mentioned that you totally did not see this coming, that y'all were going to be like social media influencers. Obviously, you were going down the finance route. You were going down education. Y'all thought about Broadway theater. This wasn't really in the picture, um, which I think is cool in and of itself because some people think they have to have their whole life planned out. And I don't even think you could do that if you really tried because there's so many twists and turns that it takes and for the good. But how did y'all get into this? What led y'all to it? So I love New Year's resolutions. I love to set intention at the beginning of the year. And one thing I want to do more of this year is listening to stories. I love stories. I love listening. I learn so much from them. And so I'm really going to be utilizing my Audible this year and listening to as many stories as I can. If you don't know about Audible, Audible wants to join you on your journey to being your best self with a membership that lets you grow in the things you love or discover something totally new and super exciting. Audible offers a huge variety of content like bestsellers, new releases, and exclusive originals from voices that can help you meet those goals that you've set for yourself. You'll find voices and stories to motivate, encourage, or inspire you, or you can find sounds and strategies just to help you focus, soothe, or de-stress. Finding ways to reduce stress is a big deal for a lot of us. We could all use that. So this could be a huge help to a lot of you. Audible has thousands of great titles to choose from and members even get to keep one title from the entire catalog every single month. With the convenient app, you can listen to all this amazing content anywhere, anytime, right in one spot. So my brother is actually just telling me about the Wing Feather Saga series and I've been super interested in it because it's not the type of listens I would typically listen to. It's more fantasy and like um, a fiction story but it's really stretched my imagination and it's been really cool to dive into that. So that's been just a fun, different thing that I'm learning about. And Audible gives me all kinds of opportunities to learn from so many different things than maybe I typically learn from or have learned from in the past. Audible also has so many great things out there for health and wellness. And I know starting at the new year, that's what our minds are focused on. And that should be something we carry on. And Audible makes it really easy to do that. My mom and dad actually got to speak at Jordan B. Peterson's conference last year, which made me super interested from learning from him. And he has so many titles on Audible, like his 12 Rules for Life. And I'm so excited to dive in and listen to some of those and just, you know, gain more wisdom from someone like him. And so I can't wait to listen to his stuff. But there's so many things out there that you can learn from and listen to. So maybe you're wanting to really focus on health and wellness, or maybe you're wanting to try something different like fiction and fantasy, like I mentioned. All of those things you can find on Audible. New members can actually try Audible now for free for 30 days, which is awesome. So if you want to try something different like I am, you can give it 30 days to see if you like it. Visit audible.com slash woe or text woe to 500-500. That's audible, A-U-D-I-B-L-E dot com slash woe or just text woe to 500-500 to try Audible for free for 30 days. Yeah, I mean, real quick though, like you just said, it's funny, we talk about that all the time. 
we have no idea what our life is going to look like a couple of years from now, because if you would have told us that our life, like we would be living in, in Arizona with two kids, like with a, with doing TikTok as our job, like TikTok <laughs> didn't exist five years ago. So like, yep. I don't know. It's, it's funny that you say that because we can so, so relate, but um, I would say I noticed Abby was watching couples vloggers on YouTube and I grew up as uh, I, I loved making videos as a kid. I, I was a creative and would make a video for every school project I ever did. And it was just a passion of mine. I loved filmmaking. And so I was like, wait, maybe we could like do these lifestyle vlogs of us. At, like as a couple, we're getting married young, which is kind of different and out there. Maybe people will be interested in watching our videos. And so we that's what initially got us into it because I thought, hey, this would be really fun just as a creative outlet for me because I wanted I was desperate to do something creative since I I love finance, but it was too much like yeah. too much business stuff. I wanted to do something fun and creative. So that's how we initially got into it. It's actually there's a funny little sub story to that too, is because when we got married, um, we're on a budget, of course, for the wedding. And one thing that was on the chopping block was a wedding videographer because it's very pricey. And Mm -hmm. so Matt's like, don't worry. Um, I know how to edit (laughs) videos from my high school class. Um, I'm just going to buy a camera, have my cousin record some things and then I'll piece it together. And so he did just that. And the wedding Mm -hmm. video is actually on YouTube, which is so funny because at the time of buying this camera, we did not have a YouTube channel. Like we weren't even thinking of anything like this, but then that camera is just sitting in our little apartment. He's like, well, it's like an investment. I already spent the money on this camera. We should make more videos. And then that's kind of what it was for the first nine wow. months. Just like him yeah. making use of his camera that he got. <laughs> that's I so really good. did. I really, I knew people were able to like somehow financially support themselves through doing YouTube. So I was like, Hey, if this could even be a side hustle of some sort, like some people have a small business on the side. Um, like some teachers will, you know, sell things on the side and make extra money. I was like, this would be so cool if, if my creative outlet could maybe like make us some money on the side to like pay for a vacation a year or something. Wow. And then uh, it was kind of disheartening though, because like af- we, I made YouTube videos every week for a year and like nobody watched them. Like we yeah. got like- a His hundred- parents were sharing them on Facebook. <laughs> like, <laughs> it was like, I would not believe. It was like my parents and all of their friends. It, like that's, that's who was awesome. watching our videos. Um, and so somehow though with, with TikTok is where we- we're able to gain a following through TikTok dances. Funny enough, since we both have dance backgrounds, we took ballet together in college. So like we, we did TikTok dances early on um, when that was a thing. Yeah. So a lot of hard work went into developing our like platforms is what they call it, but it was never, it started off so organic that it's weird to, I don't know, see what it's become. Yeah. Honestly, because yeah. it was never like, Again, it's the process. It's not like y'all went into it saying, we're going to get, you know, 6 million followers or whatever. It's like, we're just going to do this because we pay money for this camera and we're going to have fun (laughs) and like, we actually can dance. So let's dance. I mean, truthfully. That's so good. You got to use what you got, you know? And sometimes it's really as simple as what you have. Like, that's our whole thing. Live original. If you start to really embrace who you were originally created to be, um, you'll be amazed by how naturally and effortlessly things just flow from that space, you know? And, And it's normally those things that, you know, are already inside of you that God's going to use and multiply and do incredible things with. Uh, I think sometimes we try to like overthink um, our life, you know, and sometimes it's just as simple as showing up and doing something with the camera you already have. And so, but I love that you said it took a year and you're like, here, I'm going for a year. My mom's shirt on Facebook. No one's watching it. Cause I think sometimes people think like, they're like, oh, like I'll just be an influencer. I just need a video to go viral. Or, oh, I'll just start a podcast. I'll buy a microphone. And like, yes, that's a first step. But there's a lot that goes into it. It's actually really hard work. And there's a lot of work that goes on behind the scenes and um, a lot of commitment that has to happen. Like there's a lot of time before people make it that you're just, you know, having fun with it or working towards it or building an audience. There's a lot of highs and lows with that. Um, like a lot of people don't know this, but the first time we did an LO tour, so We've done like we did three LO tours. We now have conferences and they do really well. But the first time we did it, it was so different than anything that I had ever done before. And um, I had a following from Duck Dynasty and Dancing with the Stars. And right after that, I was like, I want to do this. Like, this is totally different, but this is what I really am passionate about and I want to do. So I start this tour 
And no joke, like we were trying to sell arenas. We sold 42 tickets in Albuquerque. I'll never forget. And we had to cancel the show because it was like, it would have lost so much money. And so we actually ended up just having to go to Albuquerque and spending the day there, not doing anything uh, as a part of our route, just because it didn't sell tickets. And then we went to Oklahoma the next day and it sold out. But then we went to New York and same thing. It didn't sell tickets. And it was just this like humbling thing of like, okay, it's not always going to work out, you know, um, but do you love mm-hmm. it? Do you care about it? Are you willing to keep working it? Um, and it's really cool because that was eight years ago and I'm still doing that, but it took a while to grow it and it took a while to do it, but I was confident and, you know, what um, God was doing in my life, confident and I loved it. And it was what gave me life and was fun to do and all those things. And I felt purpose in doing it. And so, I love that you guys stuck with it. Um, I think influencers is it's a word in our generation that's become like specific to a job title, right? It's like if you're an influencer, you have a blue check mark and you do videos. But I think influencing is so much bigger than that. I think, you know, everyone is an influencer in their own life because they influence people. So I have a question for y'all. As actual social media influencers, what do y'all hope your influence is on people's life? Ooh, really, really good question. Um, yeah, I, th- I think about that a lot because I like we get messages all the time from people that are like, hey, I'm battling cancer and your videos have like mm. really helped me get through this because they just bring in a joy seeing, seeing your story, seeing you tell your story and they make me laugh. And it's like, wow, that's really cool. But like, to be honest, I never knew that our videos were going to benefits when that way. Um, I just I, I, I'm still I think we're still figuring it out. Mm. I think. Abby's answer might be different from mine, but I'm still trying to figure out how, like, we got into this because we just, we love entertaining and we think it's fun. And we, uh, and we honestly didn't expect for all this to happen, but, um, I really want to do a lot of good in our world with our platform. And, Mm -hmm. um, we're still figuring out what that exactly means, like how, how we're going to do that. I mean, something we've thought about is, um, doing, a bigger campaign for charities this year on our podcast. Last year, we did uh, a fundraiser for St. Jude, um, which was really cool and and was very successful for St. Jude. But um, I still want to make sure that we're like really making an impact with with our content because Mm -hmm. there are so many eyeballs on it and I don't take that lightly. So um, that's a very broad answer. But uh, I guess I just I just want to make content that makes people laugh that means something to somebody that uh, makes them feel something and also yeah. can hopefully support some charities along the way too. That's cool. That's really cool. And I think the first step in like influencing in the way that you want to is asking yourself the question, you know, cause I think it's so easy. Like sometimes followers come upon you and you weren't really expecting it. And all of a sudden you're like, Whoa, I'm an influencer now. And so then it's like, okay, I'm going to keep doing this and posting these videos. But then there's a point where you go, okay, what is all this for? Like, what, what am I doing and making an impact? And I just want to say from someone who follows you guys, I can say a couple of things that y'all are doing and influencing people really well in is y'all bring so much joy to people's life. Like anytime anyone's seen your videos, they've smiled for sure. And so y'all are influencing people to smile on their day. Uh, another thing is like y'all are so good at just being so open about things that y'all go through and things that y'all deal with. And so many people are just looking for a friend to give people advice. And I think you guys are people's friends from afar who give great advice and steer them um, in a direction maybe they felt alone in. So like, you know, even if you weren't even thinking about those things, you really are doing that because it's from the overflow of who you are. You know, fame is such a weird thing. Um, fame is doesn't change you. It just um, elevates you, if you will. And so who you are um, before you had the followers is going to be who you are with the followers. It's just going to be seen by a lot more people. So who y'all genuinely are has overflowed into the following that you have. And it's been a joy for people to get to follow along. So um, just encouragement from afar, you guys are influencing people um, in such positive ways, whether you intentionally thought about it or not, just based off of who you are. But Abby, what do you think? Thank you. Um, First of all, that was super, super kind. So thank you. And I think, um, yeah, kind of what you brought up, but that authenticity piece is very, very, very important to the both of us. Um, and I think that kind of like bleeds into my purpose in this too, is that, um, like you said, there's a lot of people, um, especially since we got going during COVID, 
like it was very isolating time. And so being able to share about the harder things, I was just telling Matt the other day, like more often than not, when people say hi to me in public, it's moms um, telling me like, you really impacted my life speaking about your postpartum experience. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that is a specifically really can be a very challenging time because it is so isolating. You're home with your baby. You got these hormones, you have all these things. And so other moms coming up and saying like, wow, you talking about that, like really made me not feel alone. I wasn't able to talk to people in my life about that. I felt shame for the way I felt after having my baby, like things like that. And, um, which is so funny. Cause like a lot of that stuff, I was like, man, maybe I shouldn't be sharing. Maybe I'm oversharing because this is not like a beautiful part yeah. of my life. I feel really fresh and vulnerable. And so I was like, maybe this is something I pull the reins on. And I'm so glad now looking back that I didn't because yes, it is so cringy to be crying. On the internet. <laughs> I understand that, but the way that it has impacted other moms, it's made it all so worth it for me. I'm like, I'll be the, I don't have any pride. Like I'll like, yeah. I'll put it out there if it can have that effect on other moms. Yeah. So that's been a newfound purpose in this for me. And I feel like every day as we go through, I'm like, wow, like that is a new fulfilling part about this job. Mm. Um, that is making me want to continue. So the truth is we all have things in life that are just going to stress us out that might cause anxiety. And it's so important that you're actually intentional about dealing with those things that stress you out and dealing with those anxieties and not just letting them sit on you and weigh on you. A great way to manage stress is to jump into the word of God. I talk to you all about that all the time and also to listen to God's promises and abide. The abide app is a great place to do that. You can just hear the promise of God spoken over you. Abide is the number one Christian meditation app that can help you with the stress and anxiety that you feel. With Abide, you can start your day with scripture-based meditation that can draw you closer to Jesus. And that is a way better way to start the day than being on social media or emails or anything really different than the Word of God. Abide meditations start at just two minutes long, so they can fit easily into your schedule. They even feature topics like overcoming anxiety, managing stress, addiction, and recovery, and so much more. And for a limited time, our listeners can get 25% off a premium subscription when you text WHOA, W-H-O-A, to 22433. Abide also offers bedtime stories, which are so great. Bible bedtime stories that are great for kids and adults. We've listened to them with Honey, and I also have listened to them for myself. So it's no wonder Abide users report lower stress, anxiety, and depression, and better sleep. So I know at night that can be whenever your mind just runs wild. You can have so many thoughts that can make you anxious. And I remember whenever I was younger, if I had anxious thoughts, I'd be like, oh, I'm going to go watch like Disney Channel or something. But man, that is not really helpful in the long run. It is truly the word of God that's going to sustain you. And so listening to these abide stories at night have been so helpful for me to sleep good and just go off to sleep. Normally I fall asleep before it's even finished telling me the story and it goes off on its own. There are millions of people living their best life with abide and you can join them too. So get started with 20 percent off a premium subscription by texting the word WHOA, W-H-O-A, to 22433, and you'll get additional stories and meditations, premium music, soothing sounds, and more. Support this show and get 25% off by texting WHOA to 22433. That's so cool. I love that, and I'm so glad you shared because that is so real. Like I've shared on this podcast, my postpartum anxiety after having honey. And I just did not see that coming. I did not know what that was going to be like. And I had just really struggled. And I tell a story about me being in the fetal position in the closet and crying, Christian walking in being like, are you okay? And I just was like shaking. I was like, I'm so scared. And like, I don't know why, but I'm just so scared. And so we did a whole podcast on postpartum anxiety. And I even had my counselor on here to Talk, to, talk me through it with people listening. I obviously did pre-counseling before that, but I just wanted to help people like walk through that. And I've had so many moms say like, thank you so much. That was so helpful. Like, I needed that at that time. And so if we're able to give people the resources to that or just be a friend in that, like my whole thing is like, I'm not... Um, I don't look at fame like fame. I look at it like I get to be a sister and a friend to those who don't have one to a lot more people than I would get to without this platform. And if I can be a sister and a friend, which would be like the most real relationship you have with someone, it's a person you laugh with and cry with. It's the person you dance with and you're just completely vulnerable with. Then like what a gift to get to do that and share that. Now there are obviously 
pieces of your life that are private and just for you and you got to find the boundary that for yourself. But if there is an opportunity to get to open up that door and help people through it, what you're going through, I think it's just that is the gift of social media. Like that is what makes it so special and so cool. Um, And I love that you talked about I saw you did your race like right after Uh, like three months postpartum, which first of all, rock star, how cool. (laughs) Um, But what I loved about it too is that there are parts of the race and I'll let you share your story and why you even chose to do that. But I love that you share there are parts of the race that you weren't able to do because it was was like required too a lot of strength that you didn't have at the time, but that you still shared that part because so many people want everything to be filtered and perfect and like, look, I did it three months postpartum and I crushed it. But you're like, I did it and I messed up here and I didn't do that there but I finished it and like that is just that's the that's the kind of influence people need not to see someone who's perfectly filtered but to see someone who's just like gaining strength and growing as a person every day and so what made you decide because that is crazy to do a race (laughs) three months postpartum um I feel like there's like an identity (laughs) crisis that I've gone through both times since having babies it's like I've been pregnant and it's been like my main personality trait for nine months. Yeah. And everything, every decision I have made has revolved around this pregnancy. Um, every, I constantly am thinking about like, I probably shouldn't do that right now. I'll do that later. Like, and then it's like, once I got cleared by my doctor to do like, start doing normal things again, like non-pregnant things, I was like, you're like, let's go. (laughs) I'm ready, especially because I had back to back pregnancies. I didn't have a glimpse of that the first time around. So I was like, it's been two years. Like I was just gearing up and um, I'm really thankful that I was able to be active during my pregnancy, but my boundaries were very, were reminded to me every single time, like every day I worked out and then I was like, man, I got to hold that. Yeah. And then I was like, I just want to do this again and know that I can. And that um, I was like, Matt, please go with me. Because I was trying, no offense to Matt, but he was not my first pick as a race partner. I That's tried hilarious. to get my dad. I was like, maybe this would be like a daddy daughter bonding thing. But dad's like, no way. I don't want to do that. Um, who else did I ask? Oh, I asked my other friend. I was like, She's out of town. Dang it. And I was like, what? Wait, why was I not your first pick to do this? <laughs> because we did everything together. Like you oh said, we're gosh. a duo. I was like, I feel like I just, I don't know. So I think a lot of the motivation, because I did ask myself, I'm like, why do I have to do this? And I think it's because I was like, I just need to do something like push my limits because I haven't been able to in so long. So it was really, really fun. And honestly, like I got some criticism for doing it, but I was not. We're taking it as well, slow. The people that were pace. criticizing you, <laughs> yeah. like, they have no idea. Like you, you were your doctor would have one hundred percent. Like you're, you're totally fine to do everything that you did. Yeah. You did not overexert yourself. And Abby yeah. worked out her whole pregnancy. So Abby's the one that like motivates me to go to the gym. Talk about influencing. <laughs> she influences me to go be physically fixed. I'm like, my wife's going like six days a week, and I'm over here like maybe doing three days. I, I need to pick it up. <laughs> that it was, was awesome. just really fun to like get to celebrate my body in that way. Like yeah. what all it's done and then now what it can do still, despite everything it had just done, like carry a child. Yeah. So um, That's it was awesome. a really rewarding day. Yeah, for sure. Well, I was very inspired. I was like, oh shoot, okay, I need to do something. Actually, Christian is definitely my inspiration for working out because he is the six day a week guy. And I'm like the man, I work out every day when I pick up my babies. Like, I'm like <laughs> I, I am working out currently right now. And so I'm always like, I'm just staying active. But it was just funny because we were going over our New Year's goals the other day. And, and he was like, his were very fitness based and mine were very like spiritual and personal based and everything. And I didn't even have one fitness one. And he was like, okay, can I add one to your list? And I was like, yeah, hit me. And he's like, you should try to run a mile. I was like, oh my gosh. I was like, okay. <laughs> You're wow. like, actually anything but that. I know. I'm like, thanks a lot. Thank you. Because I just don't even think like that. But I'm like, okay, you're right. I I can do this. And then, of course, I wanted to give him a New Year's resolution, too. So I was like, if you can give me one, 
I can, which that's actually kind of fun to give someone else a New Year's resolution. It's like, let me see your, let me tell you your blind spot. This is what you should work on. Wait, I'll be honest, I'll probably good. start a fight. <laughs> oh my God. No, I like that idea though, because I feel like you could both, like Abby was giving me her New Year's resolutions and hers were so different than mine. Like but, I'm mm-hmm. like Christian and like Christians were fitness, mine were business. Like very, yeah. very male, like it's typical male goals. Like One of mine business is to wear cute fitness. jammies. Like yeah. Abby's oh, were, yeah. That's awesome. Like start, start a book club, wear cute jammies. <laughs> That's stuff like awesome. that. That's so me. Mine are just like fun. And I was like telling him, I said, so here's my word of the year. I was like, it's going to be stretch. And what I mean by stretch is I'm going to get my maximum use of my potential and all this stuff. And Christian's like, I like that. I think my word will be stretch too, but I think I'm like literally going to just intentionally stretch every day. And I was like, <laughs> okay, well, that's good. That works for you. So that's so funny. Oh, take man. it where you will. Yeah, take it where you will. It means something different to everyone. That's hilarious. Um, One thing that you guys have kind of mentioned it's just getting criticism on social media, which is obviously part of it. Um, I know y'all have had your fair share of going through the storms when it comes to uh, social media. How do you bounce back? Like so many people, I think are scared to even take that first step because they're scared of the criticism. And I think that's just to be expected because it's part of it. But how do you one, brave it and do it? And how do you two bounce back when it happens? It's so interesting because you have constantly been thinking about this and I think our answer would be different at so many different points in this career Mm -hmm. um for me personally right now I think we also both handle criticism very differently honestly yeah um for me where I'm at right now I am at feedback overload and that goes for the positive too like I I always say like I should never be praised nearly as much as I am and also, of course, hated as much as I am sometimes. And so I'm just at like feedback overload. And um, I've had to prioritize what's most important to me because I feel like everything is like a trade off. Like if I'm sitting here uh, consuming the feedback constantly and like filtering it and changing things, I one lose some of my authenticity because I'm, yeah, that's true. You know, adjusting based off of what they're saying. But also I'm like missing out on time with my kids I could have, or I don't know, a little extra time to sleep even like things like that. I'm like, I don't, I just am not willing to make that trade off anymore. So now I just, I really don't read anything. Um, Abby deleted TikTok this year. (laughs) So she doesn't even like, doesn't even have TikTok on her phone. I think for me, for long term, I think it had to come to that point where I was like, this is not sustainable for me personally anymore. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. I was never yeah. built for this. And so I'm no longer going to put myself under that. I think hey, kind of like I you said, that. Sadie, <laughs> um, you're mentioning earlier how when like when someone becomes an influencer, it just, it I don't know, it expands the person that they are already. It only like makes the good things and bad things about them bigger, I guess. And <laughs> yeah. I feel like that's true also for communities online. Mm-hmm. So any praise, like you get way more praise than you deserve for doing something good and you get way more hate for something <laughs> bad that you do. Or even if, if you're misunderstood, then like people will hate you if they misunderstand you. And then that will be a lot bigger than it would in, in real life. Yeah. So I think it's just like, everything's very, uh, um, yeah, everything's multiplied all the, amplified. all the yeah uh, yeah so um i don't know i think like i'm still figuring out how to handle that it's it's weird because i've noticed like every everybody wants to get to a certain point gets some sort of hate or has people that like don't like them which just stinks it doesn't feel good to be misunderstood um but I think I like remind myself whenever I see like a mean comment, like, hey, that person just doesn't know me. And I yeah. have to be OK with people. Uh, I have to be OK with people not really knowing who I am. Um, yeah. And for, it's OK for people to be wrong about me. I so. have a lot of confidence that the people that literally watch everything that we put out there have a very, very good understanding of us as people. Yeah. And so that I'm like, OK, I I like feel safe around those people. It's when like a short video that has had a lot of eyes, but that hasn't seen anything else from us. That's things like, I don't know, get really crazy. But I think that's reminded mm-hmm. us the importance. And I think a shared goal, We speaking of resolutions for this year, a shared goal for ours is just like community in general and um, specifically in-person community, because those are the people that I'm like, I want feedback from you. Because you're seeing me, you know, not just when I'm like on camera, ready to mm-hmm, film mm-hmm. or things like that. 
And that's where it's really important for me. Yes. That's the feedback that actually matters. And that's that's really the only one that matters is people that are in your life daily. So that's going to create who you really are and make you the best version of you. And then again, that overflow of you is going to be what you share online. And I get that. Last year, I spent eight months off uh, Instagram, didn't have any social media on my phone. Uh, I deleted wow. it in January, which I used to always delete Instagram in January just to like take it off, which that's really like the only social media I really run myself and I'm like my friends help me run my other accounts and whatnot just because it's it just is a lot and so anyways uh, but I run my Instagram and so I deleted it and I was gonna get it back in February and I just knew it wasn't time yet like I I guess so much was revealed to me during that first month of things that I didn't even know I struggled with when it came to social media like fears that I had and thoughts that I had and uh, value things that I felt in myself I was just like this is not it. This is not worth it. So I just like took another month off and then I ended up not downloading it back till August. And it was just so good for my life because I realized like my day was truly defined by like what my day was, you know, like what was actually in front of me, not just like on my phone or distracted by my phone. And it just gave me like a totally new lens, made me so much more present with my family and my kids. It made me again, just like affirm who I am, who I know that I am, so that when I did return, I could return with so much more confidence and everything. And I think there, there's one feature I really don't like on social media, and it, it's kind of speaks to the amplified thing. And it's now that, you know, comments can be liked, because I think used to when you got like a bad comment, mm -hmm. it would hurt, but you'd be like, oh, that person, they're, they're crazy, or they don't know me, or they're rude. Yes. But then when you see that comment gets so many likes, and you're like, wow, it was affirmed by that many people, then you're like, oh, well, do people, does everybody think that? And then like you start questioning yourself because it's no longer just this one person who made this inappropriate comment. It's like yeah. other people agree. And so I think that can really mess with your head. And so I think I just had to step back and be like, who do I know I am? Who am I with my family, with who I'm present? And just like step back in and um, get fresh perspective. And man, I've come back with just, a whole new confidence and just strength and who I am and what I'm doing. And I never steered away from who I was, but it was just like internally starting to really hurt me more than it should and make me yeah. question more than it should. And so I love that you're taking that break. I think that is like so wise and so needed. And I think so many influencers get in that trap of like, oh, well, if I take the break, what if I come back and I'm not relevant? Or what if it messes up my algorithm? You just go through the thing. It's like, it's not worth it. It's not worth yeah. it. It's like, yeah. what do I value the most? What's most important in my life? And it's the people right in front of me and how you lead your family and how you lead your uh, your life. And so this is so good. It's so, so healthy. Um, y'all are y'all are awesome. I can so relate though to the comment thing because yeah, if you get one comment, it's like, oh, like even if it's mean, it's like, well, that's just one person. But then if it has like 50,000 likes, then you're like, wow, 50,000 people <laughs> yes. hate my guts. And like, like this comment because they dislike me that much. And that hurts. Um, and that's even like why, like I, I've been on this new journey with being creative and wanting to have a new creative outlet. I've started releasing music because I've always been a singer and songwriter. And I'm just like finally releasing that. And I've had some videos where people say some like really mean things about my music, which I get it. Like not everybody needs to like my music, but it's just, it sucks when you see a mean comment that can like hurt you personally. So mm -hmm. that's when where I like, I decided for a little bit, I didn't even like read comments on anything I re released related to my music. That way I just like protected my mental health. Yeah. There. Yeah. So, yeah. And cause you're like, I love what I'm doing. I want to keep doing it. So again, mm -hmm. like if you let that into it, it can change like your authenticity and, and what you're doing. Gosh, that's so, it's so true and so real. And so many people I think like face this and struggle with it, but they just keep powering through because it's part of it. But no, that's not normal. Don't let that become normal. And uh, what y'all are saying is so true. Like you don't need too much praise and you don't need too much hate. Like you don't need any of it. Mm -hmm. If you get too much praise, you get the big head. If you get too much hate, you feel like you're nothing. And so it's like, okay, I just need to stop listening to what everybody says that I am. I need to remind myself of who I know I am and live from that space. And um, I remember, you know, so I've been, Doug Dynasty started when I was 14 years old. So I've been like the public guy since I was 14 and 26 now. So I think I've just like learned a lot along the way, but also times have changed so much. And it's so true that you're really always going to be learning. And uh, right when you think I, I got it, you know, I'm doing good, you know, something else comes in a different wave and you just learn as you go and you adjust as you go. And things don't have to be permanent decisions. Things can just be for the right now. And 
again, it's mm-hmm. all part of that process. Um, but I know we are running out of time, but you guys are, are so encouraging. Y'all are so inspiring and in all the things that y'all do. And it's such a joy to follow along. I can't wait to keep following along and see all the funny things that you guys get into and um, just doing everything together as the sweet couple y'all are. So thanks for being on this podcast and encouraging so many people and making people laugh and being influencers worth following. I really appreciate it. Yes. Well, thank you so much for having us. As a listener myself, it's really cool to have this opportunity. So I thank you. And um, yeah, thank you. It's, it's been a joy speaking to you and we've, we've had a lot of fun. So yeah, thanks Sweet. for having us on. Y'all are awesome.